and there's some more functionality that kind of falls between dynamics uh, and micropoly, something we've been talking about this entire series it seems like so far, uh, but it's really really cool. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, uh, hit always switch, hit control, and I clear my canvas. Let's go ahead and grab our matcap gray, and just if you're just starting with this, we'll start fresh again. We'll grab a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Uh, if you turn our floor on, you can see we have a floor down here. And we'll go ahead and turn off collision volume, but we'll leave floor collision on. So as we run our simulation here, it'll go ahead and collapse this geometry onto the floor. I'm also going to go up here to movie timelines and then turn off show so we don't get to see it. And under geometry, we're going to turn on dynamic. We're going to turn micro poly on. And again, what micro poly is going to do is replace every single face with a new uh, mesh. Let's actually turn this uh, smooth subdiv down to zero as well. So if you go in here on micro poly and we say, let's go ahead and grab cloth 03, which is just going to make these uh, tubes here. And if you want less, uh, when you just drag out a regular plane, it's like, eh, hey, that's too many things. You can always go in here to reconstruct, and that'll actually, if we turn micro poly off, uh, and turn poly frame back on, and let's go ahead and turn on skin shader 4 so you can see it a little bit better. As I hit re reconstruct, it's going to reconstruct all the way back down to a plane. So now you can go through here and you can kind of pick exactly where you want your geometry uh, to be. So I think this will be enough. So we'll go ahead and say delete higher, delete lower, and now we're just have this geometry here. So again, we can turn micro poly on and it's putting an instance of this onto our micropoly. And it's useful for like doing tubes and stuff for sure. Uh, now if we turn on gravity, let's turn that gravity strength down so it doesn't go quite as fast. And also let's turn up a little bit of self-collision. So as we run the simulation, you can see it's kind of, uh, kind of folding this geometry around. It gives you an interesting uh, look. Now we're going to get deeper into micropoly in how to you know, make it fit within a you know, one ZBrush unit, actually a two ZBrush unit to make this work correctly. But one thing you can do really quickly here is you can turn off fit. And what that's going to do is when you make changes to this mesh, if you go in here, we grab the move brush, we start moving this plane around. Or again, we're just moving these, this geometry and this geometry is driving this micro poly location. As you move this around, you're gonna see these are gonna start separating. So you actually like create like an explosion of pieces. Go ahead and undo all that. Another thing you can do is when you turn fit off, uh, you can also turn weld off if you don't want to weld these pieces together. But so, you know, again, as you go through here and it's like, okay, uh, weld is off, fit is off. I can go through here and I can apply this. So now this is real geometry and I go through here and smooth. Fit is off, weld is off. So when you go through here and you apply uh, your dynamic subdivisions, uh, things won't weld. But another thing you can do with fit off is you can go in here and you can scale. So you can actually make the scale bigger or smaller. So you can overlap the scale or you can go in here and make it slightly smaller. Uh, if you also just tap on any slider, uh, or most sliders in ZBrush I should say, there will be a smaller slider up here at the top that will allow you to make uh, smaller adjustments. Now unfortunately, you kind of have to go through here and tap uh, to get it to update. It doesn't really update on the fly necessarily, uh, at least as of this recording. So we can go through here and we can make these uh, smaller and they're not going to fit to the plane. They're not going to weld. And then now when we run the simulation, it's kind of starting to behave like almost like a rigid simulation. Here's another thing you can do underneath geometry, modify topology. Let's go ahead and turn micro poly off. We have our plane here. You can go in here to unweld all. And that's going to unweld every single face into its own uh, poly. So we can go in here, uh, again gravity's on, self collisions up, let's just turn that to 1, and then let's turn firmness down to 2 maybe, and we're going to run that simulation. And now because we had self collision on it, it was touching each other, they kind of explode apart. But now what they're going to do is just kind of settle on the floor as individual planes. And if you have self collision off, they're not going to see each other and they're just going to fall straight down uh, to the ground and eventually just kind of collapse over. It's kind of a cool simulation. Uh, so we want a little bit of self collision there so that they're aware of themselves. If we go over here to our micro poly now and we run that simulation, here's the individual pieces. So let's go ahead and crank that uh, gravity strength up a bit. There we go. So now uh, it's kind of run, running a rigid body simulation. If you want it to be a little bit more convincing, uh, what I would do is make sure that these things take up as much of that plane as possible. So I'd say a scale of one or maybe even over cranking the scale a bit will kind of sell that idea that these things are actually colliding with each other and falling. And uh, if you watched the previous videos on uh, layers recording your deformation animation, you can go through and you can record those vertex uh, deformation animations happening. And uh, you can also go through here and you can swap these things out. So they go uh, down and just pick another thing. Let's go ahead and choose these tubes now and then run that simulation. There's a little bit of a different effect. And if you want to choose, uh, make your own custom micropoly. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. You know, this is all we're going to go deeper into micropoly. But since we're having fun with this, let's go out of edit mode, hit control N. 
Let's grab a uh, PolyMesh 3D Star. Let's go BI Brush Insert Industrial Parts here. I'm going to hit W to bring up um, Gizmo here. I'm just going to grab like a Phillips Phillips head screw. And we're also going to go down here to deformation. I'm going to hit unify just to make sure it takes up most of that uh, unit square that I was talking about earlier. Again, we're going to be getting heavier into this later. If I go back to my PolyMesh 3D plane, we can grab that custom mesh, uh, not by clicking in here. Uh, if you want to, you can hold down Alt and tap anything and that'll throw it out in here and you can go and modify it as needed. Uh, but if you want to select a custom one, Again, we'll go back into our plane. We're going to control click this and then just grab anything out of here. And we had uh, that Phillips head here. We're just going to tap that. So now we have a bunch of stacked Phillips heads. So now as we run the simulation, these will kind of fall around each other. So that's an interesting way to kind of have a little bit of fun with unweld all, micro poly, and dynamic, and self-collision to kind of get a kind of a rigid body result.